Oh, wait, no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Bad Bit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. Of course, you can listen to this show wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube at Bad Bit Games. And if you like what you hear, please drop us a five-star review on iTunes. Or if you really, really like us, you could drop us a buck over at patreon.com slash bad bit. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, the greatest co-host whoever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson, how are you, sir? Doing fantastic, Joe. Nailed it. Video games are cool, and so are triangles. Let me tell you something. There are <laughs> We're going to be talking about millions upon millions of triangles today. We billions. Billions, even. This video is comprised of nothing but triangles. Uh, that's what Epic would like you to believe. You and me, acute, isosceles, obtuse triangles, we're all here. But... You know how bad I am at math? I forgot <laughs> half of those triangles. <laughs> obtuse one's the fat one because I know that because I'm obtuse. And then acute, acute is, is she cute? small angle right. below ninety degrees. Isosceles is come on, Kyle. You oh, teach the youth. Two equal sides. Okay. Equilateral is all equal. Yeah. Isosceles is two. Okay. So if you say with confidence, is... I will believe you. I be- I think that's it. Math is not my strong suit. <laughs> no, no, same here. <laughs> but guess what? You know what is our strong suit? PlayStation. And this week Hell might yeah. be the most packed week for news ever in the land of PlayStation. That is before. Beyond us getting a PS5 in our yeah. hands and us showing you and telling us our gameplay about it, this week is packed. We're going to be talking about the first technically gameplay reveal of a PlayStation 5 in the works. We're going to be talking about the new PlayStation Studios. We're going to talk about Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remaster. We're going to be talking about Iron Man VR's new release date, Assassin's Creed Valhalla running at 30 FPS. And before we square up the news, just two little pieces of housekeeping. First and foremost, the way we start off every show, I want to thank our top patrons over at patreon.com slash badbit. A huge shout out to our gold producer, Robbie Bobby Miller himself our silver plus tier members jb the purple monkey and ray martinez thank you all so much again it really does keep the lights on even in these really hard times it matters even more so if you guys could guys could mean a lot down below link there and also uh, we are selling face masks because it's a situation at hand it looks like we're going to need them for the long term so we're selling them it's over on Redbubble, i believe link down below in the description 100 percent of the proceeds will go to save the children i believe red bubbles profits go to another charity but the all the money that we get goes straight to save the children so if that sounds like your cup of tea then please, please, please head on over. Link down below. So with that said, Kyle, let's square up the news. Matt Kim at IJ. Ooh, got the hype shivers going on. (laughs) Someone call a doctor. PS5 SSD is far ahead of high-end PCs, Epic Games CEO says. Today, Epic Games revealed its next-gen game engine, Unreal Engine 5. To showcase the power of its new engine, Epic revealed a brand new, fully playable tech demo that's running on the PlayStation 5 in real time. IGN asked what advances are in the PS5 that allows for Unreal Engine 5 to function at this high of a level on the console. Epic founder and CEO Tim Sweeney explained that it was the system storage advancements Sony hardware architect Mark Cerny revealed earlier this year that makes the next-gen Sony console a powerhouse. Quote, I think, first of all, Sony has a massive, massive increase in graphics performance compared to previous generations. But, you know, I guess we get that every generation? Uh, Sweeney joked, but Sony's made another breakthrough that in many ways is more fundamental, which is a multi-order magnitude increase in storage bandwidth and reduction in storage latency, end quote. Sony revealed its custom solid-state drive that targets at least 5 gigabytes per second in terms of bandwidth. That's compared to the 50 to 100 megabytes per second capable on the current PS4 hard drives. Quote, the PS5 puts a vast amount of flash memory very, very close to the processor, says Sweeney, so much that it really fundamentally changes the trade-offs that games can make and stream in. And that's absolutely critical to this kind of demo, Sweeney explained. This is not just a whole lot of polygons in memory. It's also a lot of polygons being loaded every frame as you walk around through the environment, and this sort of detail you don't see in the world would absolutely not be possible at any scale 
without these breakthroughs that Sony's made, end quote. So today we saw the reveal of the Unreal Engine 5. We saw yep. a demo of a game, not in the works. It's just a game mm-hmm. that is made to demo the engine itself. Um, it yep. was like, it at least gave me the vibes of like, Uncharted or Tomb Raider, she's... Uh, I, I got I got Prince of Persia. Princess of Persia, uh, if you will. That's true. Uh, yeah, like a Prince of Persia-like vibe, especially towards the end, uh, where yeah. then all of a sudden she learns the ability to fly, and you see her flying through this, what appears to be broken down city as everything's starting to collapse mm-hmm. around her. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was, it, it, it was super impressive what we saw today. Right, Kyle? It, yeah, it, it was unbelievable and before this i had my conspiracy tinfoil hat on because after some news we'll talk about later the the event today was touted as the most important event on the summer game fest schedule right. the whole four months jeff Keighley was like this is the most important thing that we're going to show off and so many of us were like okay it must be a gigantic game whatever and then i think you were telling us some people we're talking about like maybe it leaked out that this Unreal Engine yeah. Five is what it was going to be, yeah. and it did not hurt my my hype at all. Like I want to see, I love watching tech demos because they're usually super super cool to watch, mm-hmm. and this one was absolutely probably one of the best that we've seen. Like yeah, there wasn't, I don't think it was as good as like that Final Fantasy tech demo back in the day. Okay. Um, I think it was called Agnes something. Mm-hmm. I believe. Don't quote me on that one. Or, like, the Quantic Dream one with, like, the wizard and the facial animation stuff. Or Kara back on PS3. Uh, but I think what they were talking about makes this one so impressive. Mm. And seeing it being real-time, uh, taken straight from the PS5, has me so excited for the yeah. future. And, and to just speak a little bit to that, like, a little background story here. We were going to do two episodes of the Trophy Room this week because, you know, and we'll talk about it later, we got Ghost of Tsushima uh, coming in, and there's just so much news this week that we thought with the showcase, the rumor that there was a PlayStation 5 something, and some people uh, led us to believe that it could be uh, a game or a remake or what have you, uh, we decided to hold off until we got to see what everybody was talking about today, which was this Unreal Engine, which... Um, I got to say, in the beginning, I was just like, okay, so this is, you know, usually you want to get straight to the good stuff, right? You want to see your Silent Hills. You want to see, you know, your Horizons, your Dawns. How many days, Joe? It's 1,877 days until, uh, or sorry, since Bloodborne, uh, it's it's original launch. So, like, I would love to see a Bloodborne too, But, of course, yeah, you kind of have to eat your vegetables here. And seeing a, 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 a game that will never see the light of day, but the to demo the power, I understand. From from what I understand as well, this was supposed to be a GDC. Um, this was supposed to be playable at GDC as well. Mm. And because of what what's going on today and why we're all inside, um, it got pushed back. Uh, Jeff Keighley uh, got it, and he revealed it himself so with that said let's break down just from memory here we see her in this cavern there's this light that is just breaking through uh and they actually talk about how what they've done with this engine is actually take scans from movie like quality images Mm -hmm. and put them in a video game without it hindering any of your uh, uh, FPS, any 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 of the yeah. uh, CPU or GPU. Um, Basically, the reason behind this, uh, I think I watched a, I watched a couple different reactions to mm-hmm. this already, so I'm taken from here and there. But it basically eliminates the artist's ability, or, or art, eliminates the step of sculpting the thing, yep. then taking it and making a low res version of it. Yep. And then texturing it that way, and then putting it back up, it limits it completely. You make it, you scan it, it's in the game. And and it, the one thing that I was watching the Digital Foundry, if we want to get really in the weeds here, it's all about scalability. Yeah. It's it's mm-hmm. at what scale do you want these images at? So they were actually taking 8K resolution rocks and putting them on a 4K resolution game, just as simple as that. So mm-hmm. right off the bat. That's exciting. It's very much like, sorry, Joe. Yeah. It's very much like the um, uh, this this I think was on the kind of funny one that I watched today, the Mandalorian. Yes, where the the outside 
the the whole world around them is pretty much this whole scan in and like it computer does the yeah. rest pretty much. And they actually talk about Mandalorian uh Oh perfect. Yeah. Mandalorian actually uses Unreal Engine 4 to capture the huge video walls. Because the one thing about the Mandalorian is, though it looks like they're shooting it in, like, you know, uh, in North Africa, like they did in, in the mm -hmm. previous movies, it's actually just a giant s screen in in London. Yeah. So, like, they're, they're able to take what they've learned th through their theatrical uh, 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 abilities and put them in the gaming world, which is super yeah. fucking cool. And it just yeah. eliminates so much BS. And I think that's one of the things that gets, gets devs so excited for this tech that Mark Cerny's like, yeah, this SSD apparently is is some type of secret sauce that, you know, we that that we common folk don't really understand because we equate solid state or, or just memory hard drive space into what it collects our data wise. We don't mm -hmm. really understand what it can do past that. And the one thing that I do want to talk about is the 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 luminous. Uh, That's the lighting. The lighting stuff, stuff where yeah. it's not ray tracing, but it's kind mm -hmm. of like the uh, console equivalent too. So it's giving mm -hmm. you the ability to control where you want your god rays to land in a video game, and having the uh, whatever object it hits bounce that light off in various yeah. directions. So instead of like, let's say. Uncharted, right? A set piece where the lighting is super important and developers have to put in work for that and make sure the light hits every single thing in a certain way. The way this, this engine works is it's like organic. Yeah. If the light touches it, it's going to bounce off. Yeah. Like there's no extra work needed there, which is nice. And they talk about particle to particle reacting. So particles yeah. will react to other particles hitting it. So they talk about bats. If you shine a light at bats, it'll just... They'll fly away. Uh, yeah, the the insects, right? The, in the demo, they had the character like sh shine a light yep. on the insects, and they, and they start scurry scurrying away. away. Awesome, and that's and again, yeah. and you don't have to path that. That is just something mm -hmm. that happens in your world. Yeah. And also, that I don't know. If it's part of the lumina, lumina, luminous, yeah. luminous, luminous. Yeah. It sounds like something what, out of Kojima. What's the audio? Yeah. yeah. What's the audio one? Uh, Does that have a specific name yet? Nanite is the triangle. Yes. I forget what they, they called the sound. Power the triangles, y'all. The <laughs> triangles are everywhere in games, yeah. I guess. So we just didn't yeah. notice. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they're they doing... The fact of the matter is, to make a very long story short, they're doing a lot with spatial, making things yeah. react to so, the world or making the world feel uh -huh. more natural around you. So that's why I wanted to bring up the audio because yeah. that was something from the Mark Cerny talk where he was talking about how they're really looking into this audio the next step in audio Tempest like sound. we saw the vi yeah we, we saw that picture of oh my god he used to be the he sid schumann okay sitting go. in that weird chair with all those speakers mm -hmm. adam right and just the way that this engine is also going to take that into account right. and they showcased it here where like you heard the bats fly behind you and it felt like they were moving and the rocks falling you could hear them fall all around you like it was very impressive. When I heard that, I was like, oh, sh like, literally heard that. Like, it's something we yeah. can already experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, oh, shit, this is real. Oh, what well, we're, <laughs> like, we're in for it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That that was the one thing that I was the most taken aback by. The other cool thing that they did was uh, predictive of movement. So, like, when you're climbing up or scaling up a mountain or a building or whatever, it'll actually predict what the body should be doing. And it react yeah. accordingly. So if you're in a tight space, your arms will touch the surface to try to push past it. Walking through a door, she put her hand on the door as she walked by. Yeah. And that was the engine. Like, just natural movement. Like, you walk by, you touch the, the end of the door, and you walk in the room. Yeah. Man, like you peer what around. a boring demo this was. And then we get to oh, the end yeah. where, like, she... How dare they not show a real game? <laughs> How dare yeah. they? Honestly, though... <laughs> Come on, Horizon. This could have been Horizon. Anyway, but like Yo, the color palette, man. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> but like then she 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 takes the leap of faith off this this temple that she just was in, and everything's crumbling around her. She's going super fast past everything, and you're seeing everything at work. You're you're hearing the sounds. You're seeing how uh, how you know everything's crumbling around you. You're seeing you see the light bouncing off different surfaces. The, the magical waves on her arms, like it everything. 
And right then yeah. and there, I'm like, this is what I wanted from the Inside Xbox reveal a week ago when they taunted mm-hmm. out gameplay. And they showed us it, but it showed it like, oh, yeah, this, you know, as much as, as Bloodlines 2 gets me excited, that game I could play on my PS4. This, mm-hmm. I, if you told me this ran on a PS4, I'd tell you you're lying. Like, this looked and felt next gen but before i talk yeah. to you about your thoughts i do want to get some uh some listeners thoughts in this as well jadis von metal uh says this about what he experienced uh mind completely blown i watched the extended nine minute version and i am in awe there is a great digital foundry breakdown as well dudes we are at the doorstep of amazingness nay sir Hell yes. nay greatness yeah everybody if you want to get the the deepest deep dive on this go to digital foundry they've done an amazing job over there uh nate mcgurney he writes in he says huge demo for playstation i don't think pure power will win this gen it's going to be the finesse and flexibility a partnership between playstation 5 and epic is huge interestingly or interesting it Ing Lee. Interesting. Okay, whatever. You know what? I can't read. Sorry. With all the haters on the PS strategy for this gen, and Epic blew anything Xbox has done so far for PlayStation. That's true. They also mentioned, yeah. uh, first off, they spoke very highly of PlayStation. I mean, we heard just some of the quotes there. Um, they went on to talk about a partnership and Sony kind of working in tandem to make sure that Unreal works the best on PlayStation, or at least uh, extremely well on PlayStation because mm-hmm. Unreal is the most important uh, or, or most used, most uh, used engine yeah. in in the gaming sphere. So it's mm-hmm. super important that that works extremely well on your console. And to see them kind of partner up and kind of sell the PlayStation Five, it gives me really great hope. And the cool thing about the Unreal Engine as well is that all the assets from Unreal Engine Four can be ported over to Five. Or migrated over to so Fortnite mm-hmm. will be a Unreal Engine five game. Uh, yeah, they they were talking at the end during the interview portion where Fortnite's going to be the first one where they're going to move it all over yeah. in real time type thing to see how quick of a process that thing goes. Yeah. So uh, also worth pointing out at the end of this, they did say. 2021 yes. is when developers would really be getting this. Yes, yeah. So no launch games would be in this engine yet. No, not not that I can think yeah. of now. So mm-hmm. again, it's cool. It's happening. I'm pumped. Orbital Spectre yeah. says, looks really cool. Previously, I was thinking that the graphical jump might not be that big, but now thinking I just might be ending, sorry, I just might end up being more impressive than I thought. And that's the that's thing, and, and we're going to get to the last comment for sure on this. This thing r- didn't run at 4K, Kyle. We saw this. This was 1080, 1440, yeah. uh, 30 FPS. And, I mean, again, we'll talk about the 30 FPS bullshit in a sec, but, like, it showed us what this – what next gen's going to look like. No doubt is there going to be 4K games. No doubt are there going to be games mm-hmm. that run at 60. Also, no doubt they're going to be running at less. But yeah. to see that, oh, we're seeing how lighting is actually work. They gave us the deep dive on how each of these fundamental things will work on their engine. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Joey uh, McPherson, I hope I said your name right, Joey, uh, with that demo only being 30 FPS and AC being 4K 30 FPS, is it plausible for devs to maybe do less resolution, a few less pixels, and maybe do more frames? Why don't they have it locked at maybe 40 or 50 FPS if 60 isn't possible? Are those numbers a no-no? Why is it only 30 or 60? Um, great question, and I'm going to say this, and we'll, we'll save a bit of it for the AC talk, but um, it's a variable frame rate as well. So, you know, when you're playing a game, it's not always locked in at a 60 or locked in at a 30. Sometimes the frame rate dips a bit, uh, and mm-hmm. sometimes it is notable, noticeable. But so, most of the times, it's trying to work so that you're not noticing the dip. Right now, I don't think any dev wants to lock in and say a number that they don't feel comfortable at, at, at announcing yet 
because the consoles aren't out yet and they're not done with their games. So that's why I think you're seeing the 30 FPS is because they're trying to kind of play it safe right now. What do you think, Kyle? Yeah. So I this is where I'll say I don't know a whole lot of f- FPS. I don't really care mm-hmm. too much. I don't notice any difference except for when it's really, really bad and it really mm-hmm. stutters. So like 30, 60 fine whatever as long as the game runs it's fine by me all right <laughs> but i do i do think the little i again might be mistaken about this but the reason why it's not 40 or 50 because i think the eye like third variables of 30 frames per second is what the eye can process smooth right so i think anything in between is going to give it a little bit of jankiness if i'm not mistaken I would say I uh, hold on that thought because sure. you just awoke an angry, angry monster that you sure, in the comments people be like, actually the human eye could notice six hundred thousand. Listen, phrase, you know? I want to learn. Tell yeah. me, like, uh, it, if it's not, if I'm wrong, let yeah. me know. Yeah, no, for me, uh, again, I just feel like devs aren't comfortable saying or locking in that number yet. Yeah, but again, sure. no doubt. Like, there is no way that either of these consoles are coming out and they're not hitting 4K. Remember, Xbox boasted that this thing could easily do eight. Uh, Mark Cerny said that the PlayStation Five is capable of 8K, probably scaled. But like, these things are possible. I don't think that these consoles are coming in spec to underperform. They want you to see this as a next generational leap. With that, Kyle. Take it away, because I've been talking way too much. What were your thoughts on everything you saw? What was your most uh, hyped moment? And what does this give you going into the PlayStation 5? Uh, So, yeah, I kind of briefly talked about it already. I I think just the first look at it, right, and seeing how much the lighting affected the landscape Mm -hmm. and how they moved it around and and just really blew my mind away. Obviously, the audio really really was really cool mm-hmm. like it, it it's it's kind of hard to explain how i felt listening to that because i don't play on headphones right All i, I right. play games i play games with my tv speakers because i need to hear people yelling for me up, <laughs> upstairs if i'm needed yeah um so like having that experience was very very cool it reminded me of sitting like in the dolby theaters at amc th- uh, for movies or like the um Oh, the special showcase cinema one, which I'm blanking on. Mm-hmm. But like I, I f- f- like IMAX. The, wow, wow, Kyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I remember sitting in the the theater for one of the Harry Potter movies um, when Voldemort got the wand and shot it up, and I felt the shockwave go from the back to the front with the audio. Sure thing, dork. So it gave me. Shut up, Bloodborne. Uh, <laughs> I, I I got the same kind of feeling with the bats flying and the rocks yeah. falling. So I, I, that was that was super cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. what does this give you? Because I know you've been more like, Hey, when PlayStation will show us stuff, they'll show us stuff. I've been like, yeah, come on. I'm hungry. Sony feed me. <laughs> Where does this take you going into whatever PlayStation is going to show us at the beginning of, or maybe late June? Um, even more excited. Yeah. Really? Um, but then again, knowing that this is not really going to get in the hands of developers till next year. Uh, I, I think, I think it won't look as good at this, but then again, like last was part two looks f- drop dead gorgeous already. Yeah, Ghost true. of Tsushima looks amazing and they're not on this engine at all. Yeah. Um, so I'm just excited. If, if that is what the PS5 can handle, I can't wait to see how these other games are going to handle it with what they have already. Mm-hmm. Was this the next generation of leap you were thinking? Did it exceed your expectations? Uh, or are you whelmed? I I think before we talked, I think the generational leap I was looking forward to was the loading times, yeah. right? That That is kind of what I was expecting. This just gives me more of a traditional leap in the sense of graphics and power, things that I don't really care too much about, mm-hmm. really. Because uh, as long as the games are fun to play and they look pretty, I'm good. But, like, this is... This is kind of like the PS3 to PS4 moment, but very, very scaled down. Okay. Like, it, it's it's a, a couple little tweaks to that kind of gap. Right. And I, I think it was pretty cool. Uh, to to me, I th- this is what, again, this is what I want in every, like, break it down for me. Be nerdy about it. Like, give me the specs. Give me, give me what's happening frame by frame. And so 
that's why I I loved this. Though, yes, there are some misgivings, right? Like that there's it's lock thirty. I, I didn't get to see it in four K. Uh, but even though like I didn't get to see it in four K, the game looked beautiful. It looked gorgeous, and even when they were streaming it, the game looked great, and it showed you what it needed to show you. Right. Even even without the 4K, I was blown away to see what this engine was capable of via the lighting or, yes, the sounds like those things were what I want in a next generational console. And to see that gets me excited to me. I, I, I'm right there with you where I don't think because a lot of devs are like, just wait until this thing's in your hands. Then you're going to understand how how hyped we are about this technology of how big of a leap this actually is in terms of the games are going to be games are going to be fundamentally changed because of this, this, uh, these consoles. So like that, that gives me hope that this is something bigger, but I do feel like it's a leap from PS3 to PS4. where like, yeah, the game looks a little nicer. Lighting looks very beautiful. The, the, the particle effects look fantastic, but to me, yeah, they're, I still need to see more, but I am still absolutely hyped for what we're going to see in June. And to me, it kind of goes to show the power of PlayStation. And I've been saying this, uh, uh, echoing it on, on social media, that Xbox has been very, very bullish you know, every other month showing us something new about the Series X. We saw the gameplay reveal, and that might have not blown my socks off, but it did get me excited for the Series X. And seeing that all Sony needs to do is drop a logo and people lose their mind after it, right? Is just show us a controller and everybody's talking about it. Is to show us this. They didn't even come out and promote this, if I'm if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Yeah. This is literally Epic and Jeff Keighley doing the marketing for Sony. And Sony kind of just sitting back and letting one of the biggest developers uh, in the industry, ones that have worked very closely with Microsoft, yet again, partnering up with them and having them sell your product. That's yeah. That's the power, man. Uh, you know, we we I saw just on Jeff Keighley's tweet uh, with the, with the video image, over three million people watched that minute long trailer. Damn. You know, so like that's awesome. That's at the end of the day. So when, when we talk about like the console war, you know, jargon, I'm just excited that both of these consoles are doing something crazy different that people are, are watching. And with that, Kyle, yeah, for sure. let's talk about the next story, story on the list. Next news story comes from Brianna Reeves from PlayStation Lifestyle. New PlayStation Studios brand name receives MCU style opening animation. At the start of the next console generation, all PlayStation exclusive titles will exist under one new brand name, PlayStation Studios. In announcing the PlayStation Studios umbrella, Sony also unleashed an opening animation video. The animation is very reminiscent of Marvel Studios' opening cinematic for MCU films. The new logo is pretty slick, too. Fans should expect to see it adorning PlayStation marketing campaigns, discs, and box art in the future. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, SIE Senior Vice President and Head of Global Marketing, Eric Lempel explained the decision behind the new branding. According to Lempel, quote, We have been thinking about how we unite all of these great games under one brand, and really the purpose of that is to make the consumer understand that when they see this brand, they're getting ready for a robust, innovative, deep experience that they've come to expect from games coming from PlayStation. So he came up with PlayStation Studios, end quote. The animation will only play for games developed and managed by Sony Worldwide Studios. This particular branding is to appear at the start of all PlayStation games, even those that exist on other platforms. However, it won't be implemented in the PC release of Horizon Zero Dawn. It also won't feature for either The Last of Us Part Two or Ghosts of Tsushima. In fact, the new branding is slated to go live later this year with the launch of PlayStation 5. With that, Marcus O'Neill writes in like you can at PS Shroff Room or the Casa de Bad Bit Discord server, and he asks this question. Can you convince me that this PlayStation Studios announcement was necessary? I suppose it's fine, but I really am not sure I see the point of it at all. Kyle, yeah, you saw this thing. All right, again, sure. power of PlayStation, 1 million views in less than a day. Um, again, likes and dislikes have been disabled. Comments have been dis been disabled because people are awful and spoiling The Last of Us, so please be careful yeah. out there, y'all, because uh, they're spoiling everything out there. 
Uh, what do you think serves this purpose of this announcement of PlayStation Studios and the MCU like reveal of it? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit with Marcus here. Oh, I don't know if it was all that necessary. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying it's not cool. Okay. I think it's really really cool. I think it's like I kind of like why didn't this already happen? Mm. Kind of thing almost. Right. Um, but it could be just another way to get another little drop of Sony goodness out in the news. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it looks cool. I'm I'm interested to see the franchises that are depicted on that opening, though. Right. Like, it's it's interesting to me, the ones they pick. Like, obviously, you got Uncharted and Kratos. Last of Us, uh, Sackboy. uh, Aloy. Yeah. Yeah. Sackboy is the one that I'm a little confused about since it's been a while from Little Bit. Yeah, they just want to make sure that you know that this is also for family. So, like, yeah, like, the video is... Well, they had Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, as well. But you want, again, more, like, in in the... Where's Knack? That's where I'm getting at. Where's Knack? No, stop it. (laughs) Stop it. Okay, enough is enough of this. Me. Um, no, Listen, triangles, Unreal Engine Five, neck. It's gonna be nuts. <sighs> triangles for days. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah, this intro is very much like if you've watched an MCU movie. It's like the comic panels. Yeah. Instead, it's the sacred symbols, and you're seeing all your favorite PlayStation mascots on them. Um, for me, the reason why, and let me let me take you down here. It's all about branding. Branding is super important, right? That's why we're named the Trophy Room, so that you equate us with PlayStation, so that it's easy for you to find us because we identify with PlayStation. So if you're a PlayStation player, hey, the Trophy Room's here for you. Uh, And that's what it comes to PlayStation Studios because, yeah, for the longest time, we just get Sony Interactive Entertainment, SIE. And we're like, okay, I guess that's what it is. It is, but what Sony or or PlayStation Studios does is make it so that you know whenever you're turning on a PlayStation game, this is from the PlayStation umbrella of studios. It strengthens that PlayStation brand. So it's not just to like sell this on a shirt, but it's also to give you awareness that you're in for something more, for something special. It is just like the Nintendo seal of approval. When you saw that, that was, yeah. you knew you're in for something that was above the bar. That also makes a little bit more sense because I don't go, like when I was younger, I wasn't asking for, hey, mom, can you get me that Sony PlayStation <laughs> game? No, just get me the PlayStation game. Yeah. So getting rid of the Sony from SIE and just making it PlayStation yeah. makes a lot of sense. Hey, mom, can I get that Sony Interactive Entertainment game? <laughs> yeah, you know the one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it is making it so that like, it's again. It's not even about like like Sony anymore. It's like PlayStation. PlayStation's yeah. the brand. PlayStation's the thing you yep. want to think about because mm-hmm. Sony is Sony. You know, <laughs> Sony movies they aren't that great. So when it comes to what what we want from them, yeah, studios is kind of that umbrella that kind of links everything together. And with that, Sean writes in, and he says this. I don't like seeing... Is this Sean Capri, by the way? Yeah, Sean like Connery Capri, like the pants host of the oh. Xbox trash. Hey, Sean. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like seeing comments that PlayStation copied Xbox Game Studios intro. Can't we all just agree that both of them copied Marvel and it's so blatant that everyone should be embarrassed about it? Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Did you see the Twitter spats online? It's uh, briefly, but I don't want to listen to them. It's the like, dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Obviously, both of them have been like creating that probably for a long time. Yeah, now. it's kind of like how we get two games with very similar styles mm-hmm. and 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 content. Yeah. Like they both have these uh, similar ideas, and they just continue making it in their own little world because they don't know what the other one. Is I mean, doing. it's kind of like you know a, a good a good comparison is like. Jedi Fallen Order and uh, Sekiro, how like they or, yeah, they yeah. play so yeah, yeah, similarly yeah. to each other that you're like, or uh, which one took influence from who? But they came out in the same exact year. Or when it comes to movies, like Olympus Has Fallen and White House yeah. Down, like it's like almost the same thing. Armageddon and that other bad movie, what is it called? Deep Impact. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sexy. Uh, I'm only kidding, Sean. I know you like that movie. With that, yeah. <laughs> Cool Sony Studios or PlayStation Studios. It's a thing. We're all excited about it. Let's get to the next story, Kyle. There's so many stories to talk about. I'm excited about this one. Eddie McCooch from C 
CNET. I almost said CNN. CNET. <laughs> I'm so excited. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 are making a 4K HDR comeback. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games were major hits at the turn of the century for the original PlayStation, Sega Dreamcast, and the Nintendo 64, bringing the world of pro skating to video games in an engaging way that earned plenty of praise. Now, almost 20 years later, the games are making a comeback for the current generation of consoles, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, as well as the PC through the Epic Game Store. Announced on Hawk's 52nd birthday, the new game will be aptly called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, and is a complete remaster of the two original titles in 4K HDR. All the original skaters from the first two games, such as Hawk, Bob Burnquist, and Bucky Lassick, are back, as are the tricks, parks, levels, including the secret levels, and game modes. The soundtrack will also feature songs from the original games. New tricks have been added, as have new online multiplayer modes, including the ability to create a park and share it online. Taking advantage of a modern gaming feature that didn't exist during the title's original run nearly two decades ago. It comes out on September 4th. $40 for the base game, 4K, many songs from original soundtrack, online multiplayer, original levels and skaters, new tricks, goals, challenges, create a park and skater, and developed by Vicarious Visions, who made Crash Bandicoot relevant again in the Insane <laughs> Trilogy. I am so, so, so excited about this show. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to bring the audience in here as well. Okay, we're all yeah. quarantined, which means we're all stuck with our families. And like Kyle, you stopped me mid recording before you're like, My sister's dog You heard that, right? Banging around. And then at the same exact time I got my Latina mother <clears throat> over there. She's yelling, Uh oh, oh. <laughs> See, I didn't hear that, but also I was reading the dog ran above me. I was like, come on. God, you know what? These shows are the best. Kyle, listen, you're excited for Tony Hawk. I'm so excited. Right? This dog couldn't get you in the so, in the way of you in this life. No. Absolutely not. You did not see this reveal live. Mm -mm. So I was sitting there reacting live over on twitch.tv slash kind of NYC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we were just debating what it was going to be. Right? We were like, okay, what game would it, would it, is it going to be? Is it going to be an Xbox game? Because it just said re game reveal. Yeah. And then Jeff Keighley tweeted out 20 minutes before it went live. Hey, what's your favorite PS1 games from oh, the past? Fuck. Like. Jeff Keighley, how dare oh, you? you. Son of a bitch. And then Wario64 tweeted out, Oh, here's a text message from Tony Hawk to somebody else saying that this is happening. And then both me and Mike on stream were like, Oh my god. And then five minutes into until it revealed, they started playing the songs from the game. Like Jeff was hitting all of the nails on the head. Yeah. Like, oh my god, it's happening. And then it started, and I felt like I was sitting on my floor in front of my TV with Domino's Pizza, Doritos, Mountain Dew do just playing these games for hours on end i know that's not much different from current day kyle <laughs> but you know what i mean like it is these games were everything to yeah. me when i was younger with my friends dude i remember one of my big, biggest memories was i got tony hawk pro skater on the n64 I believe yeah uh and and like I, I it was my birthday and we had a birthday party and everybody was like huddled around uh playing and taking turns at pro skater oh yeah Th that game, that series means so much to not just me, uh, but I think and, gamers across the globe, man. And I, th I think what makes this announcement so happy is they could have done a remaster and it would have been fine. Yeah. But the fact that they're getting the licensing to all these iconic songs that go with the game mm -hmm. makes it so much better. And I give me just Superman on loop as I'm jumping over <laughs> half pipes and, and 900s. Like, that's what I want. And to have, like, a creative park and creative skater in the games. Yeah. Right? Having new tricks. That's fucking awesome. Go go online against uh, friends, yep. like, with the, gra the graffiti uh, mode. And you will have crossplay. It's not at launch, but they said they announced that the crossplay will be a thing. Uh, Vicarious Visions is so great. But, Kyle, why should I be excited about this, man? Remember Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 and Tony Hawk HD? It was awful. So why should we trust Activision? I trust Vicarious Visions. Oh. I trust what they did with Crash Bandicoot. Okay. I If you listeners out there or YouTube watchers, <laughs> once you're done with this, I want you to look up the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 mm -hmm. trailer mm -hmm. and then go see this one. They are night and day. And then when you realize Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 came out like four years ago, it looks like a PS2 game. Mm. It's not. This looks completely from the ground up. If 
uh, what makes me trust in this is because of Vicarious Visions. Okay. Because Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was so good. It felt like I was playing Crash on the PS1 back in the day. Mm. So if they can do the same for Tony Hawk and then the future of Tony Hawk, if they keep bringing it back and the other games back, I'll be so happy. All right. All right. No, I'm definitely on board as well. Like, this is a day one purchase for me. I'm not, like, over the moon about it. I know there's a limited edition. It comes out uh, It comes out with, like, a skateboard. Uh, the li- a limited birdhouse skateboard deck. Yeah. Also, if you pre-order it physical anywhere, you get a tech deck, a little finger skateboard. So, I so I'm 100% doing that. Yeah, I remember that as a kid as well. So like, Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm totally in. It, it's, it's hitting all where it needs to hit. And with that, let's get into some flash news. Oh, Adam Bankhurst, friend of the show, <laughs> yeah. guest on the show from IGN writes, Marvel's Iron Man VR release date now set for July 2020. Marvel's Iron Man VR has a new release date and will now arrive on PlayStation 4 PSVR on July 3rd, 2020. No further details were given alongside the announcement on PlayStation's Twitter, but SIE does promise we will be getting more news in the coming weeks. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Joe, Joe, Joe. I'm in. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it, it kind of goes to show that this, with the the state of the world slowly, hopefully getting back to normal, games are slowly coming out. We're slowly getting release dates. I never thought, I don't know about you, but this game should never been delayed. I think it's... Correct. It's... I'm buying this digitally. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's I, and we, we've, I think we brought it up a couple, a couple of the past episodes, I guess. But like, you gotta imagine that a bundle was in the works with this, yeah. right? So like, you had to get it out as early as possible because it's gonna run up into PS5, and then you're gonna have people choose PSVR bundle or PS5. So, so and yeah. most people will probably go new console. And dude, this summer so for it, VR is gonna be fucking insane. Like, Yo, yeah. I was sorry to drop the Absolutely. hard F, but, like, you got Iron Man, you got that awesome uh, VR uh, shooter. Uh, I'm reviewing uh, uh, the Walking Dead Walking game, Dead. and then we got Vader Immortal. Like, awesome. PSVR is yeah. alive and kicking, man. Hell yeah, it is. Let's get to the next story, which isn't a flash story. Jordan Allaman from IGN writes, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will run at a minimum of 30 frames per second on Xbox Series X. Ubisoft has revealed that Assassin's Creed Valhalla will run at a minimum of 30 frames per second when it launches on Xbox Series X. Ubisoft issued a statement to IGN revealing that the forthcoming release will target... Okay. Oh, man, that's the same sentence over and over again. Quote, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will run at a minimum of 30 frames per second. On Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we are committed to offer the best experience to our players by immersing them in the most beautiful words, worlds and environments we could create and leveraging not only the graphics enhancements offered by the next generation of consoles but also faster loading times and the new architectures end quote of course this may change as the game is finalized ahead of its launch later this year but for now you can expect 30 frames per second when you boot up the game in 4k on launch day microsoft has previously made clear that its performance target for the console is 4k at 60 frames per second up to 120 frames per now second. here's the thing you would think i'm gonna kick xbox in the shins um, and you might be saying, Joe, why are we talking about Xbox Series X on a PlayStation show? It's because this game is also coming out on PlayStation 5, and PlayStation 5 on the spec sheet is uh, is a lesser console in terms of power-wise. So it is mm-hmm. important to note that, yeah, like, like mentioned before, 30 FPS, especially in an open-world setting, uh, should that be, is that the worst thing in the world when we see PCs are able to do that? Uh, Kyle, well, again, what are your thoughts just just on surface level hearing this news? You still don't care? Yeah, I'm still good. Yeah. No, that's how kind of I feel. I feel like everybody's kind of overreacting. To kind of echo what I said uh, earlier in the show, again, you don't want to say anything if the game isn't done. You don't know what hiccups you're mm-hmm. going to run into. Uh, so, can, can I be real? Yeah. This might offend some people. Say yeah. it. But I, I feel like frames per second is the hipster thing of gaming. <laughs> It it is the the Brooklyn of gaming. Okay. It is, oh wow. It, Dude, we're just gonna say fuck Brooklyn on the show. No, no, oh, okay. no. I mean like the area in Brooklyn where hipsters live. I forgot that Williamsburg is that what it is? Oh. I don't know. I think that's where the hipsters are. <laughs> uh, I just feel like you know it's cool to be upset over the right. frames. I just it's cool. It's it's not thirty FPS. It's, it's not, not sixty. 60. I, my, my sword swings so so slow compared to yeah. like I. 
I understand competitively, right. it is a huge deal for people who play this for a living and stuff. That's a huge. Deal. But if we're talking an RPG single player, yeah, I, yeah, I, same here. That's why I'm like, why is everybody even upset? It's single player. Who I cares? Guess. And if you really want all the FPSs in the world, just buy a PC. I don't know what to tell you at this point. Yeah, I right, good. Absolutely. Get all the frames. In a new segment, uh, did yes. I? Did I mention earlier though that I looked up the frames per second thing with the eye? I was completely wrong. So I don't don't listen to earlier me. It was bad. Earlier me had no idea what the fuck I was earlier, talking about. Earlier me was, was present stupid. me knows what I'm talking about here. Practically, I know a doctor. Up to a thousand frames per second. Whoa! Triangles for days. Kyle, in a new segment, what's an E3? Kyle, let's read the first bit of news here. Jonathan Dornbush from IGN writes. Ubisoft announces Ubisoft Forward digital event for July. Ubisoft is the latest major gaming publisher or developer to announce a digital E3 replacement for its usual press conference, with the company confirming Ubisoft Forward for July. On July 12th, Ubisoft Forward will include a fully digital showcase with exclusive game news, reveals, and more. Ubisoft did not list any games for the event as part of the initial announcement, but it already has a, has quite a few revealed games that could be highlighted. There is, of course, the most recently revealed Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is confirmed for a PS5 and Xbox Series X release, as well as its current-gen hardware and PC. There is also a trio of confirmed Ubisoft games, Gods and Monsters, Rainbow Six Quarantine, and Watch Dogs Legion, all of which were delayed from their early 2020 planned release dates to accommodate next-gen launches as well. Ubisoft also has several long gestating games that could be in the spotlight, including Beyond Good and Evil 2 and Skull and Bones. Holy crap. July 12th. Hell yeah. I, well, E3 usually is in like the second week of June. June. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this kind of goes back to the story we were talking about before of like, listen, if we know what Valhalla is going to run at, this is the show to talk about it. This is the show to get your deep dives. Um, with that, Kyle, where's your hype on this? Yeah, Ubisoft oh. usually does but for the past few years pretty yeah. well. Yeah, honestly, their 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 press conferences kind of hit or miss. I missed the days where Aisha Tyler were the host. She was she was amazing. Really? Okay. Um, uh, I I'm super hyped for this. I want to see that Assassin's Creed Valhalla extended demo, right. like the live watch along. I want to see the HUD. I want to see how it moves and plays, especially with the news that like the Hidden Blade is going to going to go back to like the one hit kill. It's going to actually do damage and be lethal like it's supposed mm-hmm. to be gods and monsters look super cool but we haven't heard anything about that so more of that please watch dogs legion i want to see if that's been updated in any ways also like i feel ubisoft also has always that one surprise mm. whether it's mario cross rabbits whether it's the Starlink game, Star Fox is in there. I realize those are both Nintendo things. But, like, Steep was a surprise oh, sure for E3 are. a couple of years ago. <laughs> Beyond Good and Evil 2 was a go. surprise. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, they, they always have a surprise up yeah. their sleeve. So I'm Because I'm, all their heavy hitters are here. Yeah. Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed. Watch Dogs, maybe, could be a surprise. Mm-hmm. Dude, I think Watch Dogs definitely a February game. That's what I'm thinking at this point. Like next February. Yeah, next February. Hmm. You know, take a pe- take 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 a advantage of that power, son. Well, I could also see it being next fall's big Ubi game, like Assassin's Creed is this year. Oh, oh, wow! You think it's that far delayed? We haven't heard. Any- oh, my bad. I was thinking a different Watch Dogs. Game. That's fine. No, that's fair. <laughs> I was yeah. I forgot Legion was a thing for a second there. <laughs> So, yeah, what other heavy hitters do they have that, that they're not showcasing? I know. I think that is the only problem as my... Rayman? <sighs> but that's been that's been dormant for a while. Yeah, no. I think that this is the year where Ubisoft's finally going to get their crap together. They're going to go, like, here are the release dates for A, B, and C, and finally get them all rolling out there. Because it's going to be... They're going to have that PlayStation effect that PlayStation had for a few years where, like... They keep on showing us the same games. Maybe one or two are different mm-hmm, or new. Mm-hmm. And then like people are like, man, I don't know. So it's just the same old, same old. And then they just leave all together. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Let's get to the next I am excited. Of this, Gods and Monsters, we literally have just seen that first trailer. Oh, absolutely. If I'm yeah. not mistaken. So whatever else that game could show off, it would be Go good. for it. 
Uh, ben Tyrer from Games Radar writes, future game show, PC game show, and Guerrilla Collective to air on June 6th. Mm-hmm. The future game show is set to air on June 6th from 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. Games Radar's live stream will feature exclusive trailers, di- deep dives on the future of gaming, as well as announcements. PC Gamer will be hosting their own show before hours, with the PC gaming show kicking off from 12 p.m. PST. There will also be additional briefings from the Guerrilla Collective and Paradox Insider. The Guerrilla Collective is a collaboration between indie developers, Media Media Indie Exchange, and Kind of Funny Game Showcase. With three days worth of online shows planned from June 6th to, through June 8th, with these events hosted by Kind of Funny's Greg Miller. June 6th Guerrilla Collective show will be an online press event starting at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. BST. Indie indie developers such as Larian Studios, Rebellion, Z A slash U M. I'm guessing that's how you say it. Mm. Zam. Zam. And <laughs> Zam. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and many more are confirmed to be showcasing games with the Gorilla Collective. So make sure to tune in for their show. That will then be followed by the Paradox Insider, which will be streaming on the Gorilla Collective's Twitch channel from 11:30 a.m. Pacific time. One thing's for sure, June 6th is going to be a big day for gaming. Tim Wolf, what up, my man, writes in, he says this. Oh man, I'm so excited. I feel like the hype is slowly building. Here's my question for you guys. Is this more exciting than E3? Is this all that you hoped for in the future of the summer game announcements? Kyle, we got all these shows, right? Like, uh, we got a game. Uh, what is this? The Future Game Show, The Gorilla Collective. We got the Summer Game Fest. We got IGN Summer of Play, I think it's called. Not to mention uh, Summer Game Fest is June 9th, the Steam Festival. June 11th is Cyberpunk 2077, Night City Wire. June 11th is EA Play Live. The rumor is June 4th is the PS5 thing. Fuck it, Kyle. Like, Listen, it's, crazy. it's time we announce something, right? <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, June uh, 7th? Do you remember that streaming service I joked about last year? It's yeah. out right now. Yeah, right now, right here. The Kyle streaming service. <laughs> Send me $10 a month, and I will mail you a game soon. <laughs> Fuck you, Mark, <laughs> with an asterisk <laughs> underneath. Kyle might not actually give you a game. Or I'll, I'll, I'll turn on screen share on Discord. You can just play Bam. it. Bam, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I look, I'm way more excited by this news than E3. I don't care to say that. I know a lot of people are very defeatist in the ways of like, oh, man, without you, you guys are going to rue the day that we don't see an E3. Uh, and we don't get to, you know, watch from our TV as you know, Spike TV hosts like, tell us what's <laughs> hip and popping. Like to me, I'm 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 never going to E3. I yeah. mean, look, I mean, I I don't think it's coming back personally with this whole uh, uh, situation going further than what we thought it would, and what the the new normal is. I don't see E3 existing. I just don't. Uh, they're too archaic, and I feel like everybody ha- ha- sees this moment as like this is our chance. Let's kill the beast. Uh, Mm. So, yeah, I'm way more excited because we're seeing companies do something different and take risks and band together to announce games together. Yeah. I don't know. What about you? This this will be a cool, not saying they won't have big games, but this is a great group of just, here's all the cool indies that you'll be playing in between the big ones coming up soon. Like that's awesome. That's why I love the kind of funny game showcase when they did it. I lo- I love going to PAX and seeing the indie mega uh, mega booth yep. and going in there and seeing these cool ass ideas. Um, now they'll get a showcase and not just be thrown in a montage where it's the name of the game and nothing about it. Exactly. Like and yeah. they get to kind of own their their moment, and I I yeah. just, I really like that. So to me, I like this more than E three. Do, will I miss the Keanu moments? Absolutely. But you know what I won't miss? The moments that go wrong, where Nathan Drake just stands in a corner, where, you know, the Assassin's Creed game just crashes, right? Like, yeah. I'm not going to miss any of those. I'm not going to miss the awkward transitions or the horrible celebrity guests. I, honestly, this week has also been fantastic. Yeah. It feels like a mini E3. Yeah. Yesterday, when we recorded, it was Tuesday. That was when we got the Tony Hawk and the PlayStation Studios. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Iron Man VR date. Like, it was nonstop then. Today, we got the Unreal Engine 5. Tomorrow, we're getting a state of play. Like, it's going to be nuts. It's something to constantly kind of look forward to. 
in yeah. a time where we need stuff to kind of look forward to. Yeah. So, like, for me, this for is sure. this is awesome. I'm hyped for it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kyle, I do have one question, though. Are you holding on to something? Now I am. Prepare the drop. Each and every week, PlayStation drops the latest and greatest in all things PlayStation onto the PlayStation storefront. The only problem is that this week didn't have many really good games, but we have the state of play on May 14th, which is today, question mark, P for as you're listening to this. Oh yeah, yes. uh, as you're listening to this. <laughs> fuck. Uh, four p e t one p. Wait, what, what? Kyle, what is this? Four p.m. Eastern. Okay. One p.m. Pacific. I've never seen that like that. <laughs> anyway, Sony State of Play: The Ghost of Tsushima. Tune in for the 18 minute look at new gameplay and information on the Ghost of Tsushima. Hell. Yes. Kyle, what are we doing for this? Because, again, this week was so crazy that we thought we would need to break up the show into two shows. Yeah. So what we decided to do, and let me know if, I, if I'm if i running into anything right here, tripping up my words. Uh, well, we talked about it beforehand. Yeah, kind of. So what <sighs> we're going to do is we're going to have a kind of reactions, the good, the bad, the ugly, the breakdown of the Ghost of Tsushima state of play. On Bad Big Games on YouTube instead of just having Correct. it on the RSS feed. The reason why, um, to get a little bit technical with y'all, is when you release two things on an RSS feed, um, especially so soon, is iTunes will only promote what's the latest thing. So if you're not a regular with a two sh- two shows a week thing, what happens is YouTube kind of kills promoting the one show in favor for the other, for the newest so we don't want that to happen because this week was a huge week for PlayStation. We got want everybody yeah. to get a listen to it. And and also, real talk, yeah. Joe doesn't want Last of Us to be spoiled by, for yes. me. So like having us do a live stream react to it, um, we we're afraid people would be just coming into chat, going through all the PlayStation people reacting and just putting in spoilers in chat. So we're going to avoid that, like the plague yeah. until I get my hands on. Yeah. And that's why anything PlayStation related that we're doing until the last of us part two comes out. Uh, there's yeah. no comments. Comments are completely disabled. So come on, drop on by uh, bad big games on, uh, on Thursday. We're going to watch ghost of Tsushima technically together. Hell yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm super pumped. Kyle, what do you think we're going to see? Like, I mean like what type of game do you want to see? this game to be do you want it to be I, an assassin like you know tenchu game or you want it to be or, or old school assassin's creed well what are you what are your thoughts here i want it to i want it to be a sucker punch game okay. i want it to be fluid i want it to be beautiful i want it to be fun in its powers because i'm assuming that he will have powers after the first trailer right mm. it showed him transform you, so like, do, oh really? Did you get that vibe? I didn't get that vibe. I did from the first one. Yes, I did. Okay. I totally got that he transformed into a different, the ghost, right? Oh, okay. Uh, I thought like the ghost is the moniker, of like he's it, that it could also be, but yeah. I I don't know. I feel like it might be more than that okay. from that first trailer. Um, I just want I want them in this to address what we heard about no waypoints. Mm-hmm. I want to see how that works. I want to see them traverse through the world a little bit. Uh, give us the moment to moment. What are side missions going to look like? True. Are we? Is it going to be like a Ubi open world type thing where we have to scale pagodas and look out and unveil more of the map? Yeah. And like, well, just give me. Well, Joseph talking the I'm accent doing. while he plays the game. Yes, I want to be historically nope. accurate. <laughs> Kyle, it's 2020, man. Everybody's okay with me saying nonsense. I think, right? Nope. But yeah, no, I'm really excited. I just want to see more of this game. It looks so beautiful. And that's a crazy thing is like, as we enter or exit this generation, we're seeing like Ghost looks phenomenal. It's the most, it's the be- most beautiful yeah. game I've seen this generation. And then I take a look at what we just saw with the PlayStation 5 yeah. gameplay reveal. Um, five years in the future, <laughs> seven, Whew. who knows, however long Whew. the next gen lasts. We're going to so, be like, wow. Yeah. Go, going back a little bit, something that I forgot to say yeah. earlier, like whatever the next jump to next gen is, it's going to be 
tiny. Yeah, it has to be, right? Like, to all of us. It's, what else can they add? I don't know. That is... Are the characters going to jump out of my screen and yell at me when I'm doing bad? I feel like, I feel like it's going to get to a Westworld moment of, like, it has to plateau. Right? Yeah. Uncanny Valley. And that's the thing. is like, dude, this game's going to look so shitty in eight years. <laughs> when, we're, when we're all Which on our home. Which blows homeboard. my mind. Yeah. That this game will be that bad looking. Yeah. Or look wonky. Yeah. And we're like, oh my it's god. nuts. Have you played games on a controller? I just plugged this into my skull. Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's Ready Player One. Yeah. You are in at the game. Oh my god, if only. But with that, yeah, totally excited again. Bad big games, you know where to go. And that was the drop. Our last segment, Kyle. Mm-hmm. You know, each and every week, you can send in your questions, your comments to the Trophy Room, PS Trophy Room on Twitter, or the Bad Bit, Casa de Bad Bit Discord server. Or you could send me your mail via Andrew House's mail. You write your your piece of mail. You mail it over to him each and every week. I swim over, hoverboard over, use dolphins. Don't worry. No dolphins were harmed in the making of me stealing Andy's mail. I travel the British Channel. I steal Andrew House's mail. I come back. And today we got two pieces of mail. Can can we make it easier for for you to get this mail? So, like, when you mail Andrew House your questions... Mm -hmm. Just put underneath Andrew House's name, attention, Mr. Badbit. So that way Joe doesn't have a rifle through all his other stuff. No, I just, so no, I just take the other stuff. Of mail. Oh, you take everything. He's not paid rent since 1996, Kyle. Damn, man. He's doing well if he's still in the same house. Mm, you think that. Famous Seamus <laughs> writes in, with The Last of Us Part 2 coming out in little over a month, do you guys have any plans leading up to the release? Replaying the first game? Watch the retro replay Let's Play of the first game. Of course, avoiding the comments like the plague. Read American Dreams. Make clicker noises at random uh, at random times of the day. Look at clean. Uh, look at and clean your Last of Us collectibles. I'm currently playing The Last of Us Remastered for the first time and plan on reading my copy yeah. of American Dreams signed by Faith Aaron Hicks, the artist of the book. If you wanted to know, I did want to know. Yeah, famous, sure. thank you. Right there, right there. Because I also have the book. Oh. I can't wait to reread this. It's yeah, great. It's also a delicious ice cream. Uh, yeah. Here's what we're doing, Kyle. What are you we know, doing? You know, each month, if you're a patron, and for this month, uh, it's free to everybody, video formatted now. We're on the road to greatness. Mm-hmm. Hop in, buckle up, grab your, your snacks. We're on the road. Next stop, Last of Us. That's right. So we're going to be covering The Last of Us Part 1, and how I'm thinking of segmenting the show is the first part will be the fall, and I believe, what is it? The s- winter. Winter, yep. So the, the first part, the first two parts of the game we're going to cover, and that's going to be premiering on May 29th? I think. Sure. Yes. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, and, Man, yeah. I got to get to playing. I know you got to. <laughs> and listen, it's all here. It's all in my nog. It's all in my memory. I can't wait to go back this weekend and replay the first two parts. So again, that's yeah. the road to greatness. That will be on Patreon as an RSS feed and video uh, format as well. So you get to and see. And then our the plan faces. is in June to do part. Exactly. Two. So June will be the Last of Us Part Two, and it'll be kind of like a roundtable discussion of our thoughts walking in and out and of course we'll have those yep. comments muted for everybody sound good to you Kyle? everybody oh i'm ready i don't know if i am let me make those shivs it's been a while since i played oh god i don't know if i am okay nate writes in to be serious for a moment how will these new graphics affect boob physics <laughs> and to be fair to the ladies penis physics will it be the correct step in the right direction. Oh, man. Kyle? I don't know how to answer this question. I saw this and I was just like, absolutely, we're putting this in the show notes. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure? As long as it's not like who, who, dead or alive where it's on the box. Like, hey, look at the jiggle yeah, physics. Honestly, no, don't do that. I think that question is for whoever the creative director of dead dead or alive is yeah, exactly. that guy's fucking always horned up dude or uh oh moon God. man from near automatopia 
I, I never played it, but I've heard I mean, it. have you seen Near? <laughs> have you just seen I the have cover seen art? Near, yes. Have you seen have. what is it, 2B? Yeah. More like I don't know, I was gonna say double D. <laughs> Oh, damn it. I was thinking, like, is that pun uh, correct? Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. But that is something to think about. What are physics, you perverts, are going to look like in the next generation? Shoe only knows. Shoe only knows. Kyle, that's been the trophy room, man. Yeah. What a good week. Great a week. Busy week. My busy. golly. Jeez. Again, we're going to save Kyle from The Last of Us spoilers. So... Like always, I want to thank our you know Patreon uh, patrons over at patreon.com slash badbit. Thank you for supporting the show. Everybody, thank you for watching over at Bad Bit Games. Thank you for listening on the podcast service of your choice. It really does help us out if you drop us five-star review on iTunes. We're only, speaking about boob and penis physics, three reviews away, three five-star reviews away from 69 reviews on iTunes. Ooh. So get at it, boys, girls, and all peoples. Uh, and yeah. Again, P.S. Trophy Room on, on Twitter, Mr. Babbitt on Twitter. And with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody keep hunting, keep playing PlayStation. <laughs>